Some hi, Ron. Hi, hi, Kimberly. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing as well as can be. <laughs> awesome. So I guess um, to kick things off, um, I would just ask um, how you felt the the movie or how what was different about it being released on demand versus um, in the theater, like going into it, you expect it to be this big um, box office fanfare, but instead it's released at home. Do you feel like it was the movie that families just really needed um, at this moment? Or like, what do you feel like was different um, with it being at an at home release versus in the box office? Well, I think you put it very well. Um, at first, I was a little bit disappointed that we weren't going to have the the original release just from an ego perspective that I, I'm not in very many movies. So I, will, I love it when I get to go to a premiere. I was looking forward to meeting Mary J. Blige and talking right. to George Clinton and things like that. <laughs> But I think the best thing that came out of it was exactly how you put it, that we were able to provide like an escape, a, a distraction for people, for parents. I'm a parent myself. So I knew at that time that, uh, you know, my son was a little stressed out. I was a little stressed out that he was stressed <laughs> out. And so to kind of be able to have the movie premiere be a worldwide thing that we could all share at home and I could post pictures about it and, and see my friends post pictures about it and show me their kids watching it and how much it meant to them um, that I, I, I got over missing the premiere pretty easily. I thought, I think this was uh, the, you know, that we could actually help people. That was very nice. Awesome. Hi, Ron. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Tessa. Thank you for just wearing your normal outfit. <laughs> this is totally how I dress every day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I get I, it. Quarantine <laughs> has done a lot of things to listen, all of us. <laughs> exactly. Got to entertain the kids however I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to know what message you want families to take away from this film. Oh, I think one of the best messages that this movie has is about uh, diversity and about how we all have a unique voice and a unique place in life and that no one group should override the other, that we have to learn to respect and, and understand each other's differences and to allow each, and that's the best way to live in harmony. And again, I think that's a very poignant message at a great time for it to come out. Um, I'm proud to be a part of that in particular. I love that the sequel addressed that. Awesome. Thank you. I agree with you. Thank you. Hi, Ron. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for Thank being you. in your hallway. <laughs> I had to come outside because my son was playing on his Nintendo Switch. I was like, I know as soon as I started talking, he's going to start screaming at Mario. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, so and I was going to start asking a lot of questions about, you know, what's he playing and how his Animal Crossing exactly. Island is going. Yeah, that exactly, was exactly. Yeah. Where, where Princess Peach is and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to know what was your favorite scene? And as well as, did you have a favorite scene that you wanted to see in the movie that got cut? Hmm. Um, well, as far as the getting cut, no, not in particular. I think I was really ultra excited that um, from the first movie to the second movie, Cooper had such a, a bigger story, his own kind of like B plot line. And so selfishly, I was very excited about that to get to act a little bit more, to, to showcase a little bit more of my range of, in, in his journey of finding his parents. Um, so I was really excited about that. But to tell you the truth, a scene that really hit hard for me was when they go in and they meet Kelly Clarkson's character and we go into the whole country troll village and to see um, a young movie, a movie like that for kids kind of showcase and deal with death a little bit was something that, um, you know, and obviously it wasn't over the top. It wasn't, you know, gratuitous by any means, but it was something that I think a lot of um movies miss out on a lot of things gloss over and I, I was something I was really kind of um, happy to see and it made the movie have a little bit more um, heart and oomph to it to me from that scene I know I might be weird for saying that but <laughs> no it, it was it was beautiful it was absolutely beautiful so thank you thank you Kathy hi hi Bert Sorry, everybody took all the good questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. 
they took all the like deep, meaningful questions. I'm going to ask you. So my son wanted to know what was the cringiest or what is the cringiest moment you've ever had filming? Oh, what's the cringiest moment I ever had filming? Um, it probably wouldn't have anything to do with, with, with trolls. But when I was in an episode of a show called New Girl, where I was a homeless dancing man, and <laughs> um, I didn't know I was going to be homeless and shirtless when I did the audition. And so when I got there and they were like, you just wear a dirty jacket and you're naked dancing around. I was like, OK, this is. <laughs> this is going to be difficult for me, but I figured it out. People seem to really like that scene. You can yeah. look it up if you want, but that's probably- I the remember cringe. it. <laughs> oh, thank you. For, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Well, lots of questions. This one also comes from my son, who is nine years old. And the first Trolls movie that he saw was the first time that he realized that real people voice the characters. I don't know where he thought they came from before, but <laughs> that's when he realized. And since then, he has wanted to be a voice actor. Mm. So I'm wondering if you have any advice for him or any other kids who are looking to get into voice acting. Oh, um... I'm a, a weird sort in the fact that I didn't really pursue voice acting. It more kind of came to me in the fact that like, this is my voice and I've always sounded weird, especially for a, a large black man. And so um, is this kind of a thing where people made fun of me and then I was able to then use that as a strength. And mm -hmm. I, but, but it also is a great skill as far as mimicking and learning dialect and learning different things of that manner. So I would say if, if that's something he wants to pursue, I would learn about like just looking at different dialects, different regions, how people talk in, in different areas of the country, because the more voices you can do, the better. But also you could just be a complete weirdo like me and just do the, the one or two voices you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Hi, Ron. Hi. How are you? Oh, there you are. I see. <laughs> so my son is two, actually turning three next week. And oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Your character was one that like you have such great energy and like he loved. He just loved you. So my question for you, and this may be a little bit hard to answer, but I wanted to ask it, is when you're playing like you know a regular movie where like you're actually you can actually study like a human and a character and get into their personality how did you find it like to do your character in an animated movie how do you kind of learn that versus like a real person so I mean, um, no absolutely i understand that that um mostly the difference is learning to be let your imagination take control. Like when you're acting in, in the most live action things, you have other actors to play off of, you have the, the scene, you're in the street or wherever. So you can get a better sense of like, this is real and this is happening. And, and I think voiceovers is kind of the opposite where I just kind of like turn into my childhood self and you can't be afraid to scream and yell and get crazy and it sound weird. And it, it can be very cathartic. A lot of times I leave sweating and it's like a little workout for me, you know? Uh, but it's mostly just about letting the best advice I usually get is um, quit acting, be more you, be more you, just be you. And, and that's been helpful for me. Great. And that's the theme of the movie, too. So I love that. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Hi, Ron. Hi, Amy. How are you doing? I'm um, great. So you touched on this a little bit before, but I'm going to have to go for the fangirl question because mm -hmm. I know if I'd been in your shoes, I'd have been like, oh my God, George Clinton and Mary J. Blige are my parents. So I kind of want to know about your reaction to that. And did you get a chance to work with them or meet them at all during the filming? <sighs> Um, my reaction was that, oh my God, I can't believe these are my parents. It's going to be great. My mom's going to be excited. And so I was really happy about that. Unfortunately, I, I didn't get to work with them. Most of my work was with the producers or, and, and then um, sometimes with Anna, but that was about it. Um, and so I was disappointed in that, but I, I will tell you a little story if you don't mind. Um, and 
I was really wanted to meet George Clinton at the premiere because he's one of the reasons that I got into entertainment. I went to one of his shows, the Parliament Funkadelic show, when I was in my early 20s in Portland, Oregon. And I had the time of my life. I just was dancing for like three hours straight. My feet were hurting, but I was like, I don't care. I'll just figure, I'll get a cane. I'm going to keep on dancing. And I was having the most fun. And then the concert ended and I was like, oh, I have to go back to work tomorrow and I'm not going to have this fun again for a long, long time. And they're going to go off to another town tomorrow and do another show and I go I want to live like that I want to be part of the party and have fun every day and that kind of got me in motion to get into comedy and get into acting so I was hoping to get to tell him that one day and hopefully I, I still will but um, it's a dream come true that he is a uh, reason why I got into this and now I've gotten the chance to be in a movie with him Hey, Ron, it's Amanda from Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts, but you can call me Poppy today. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. You should hang out with Tessa. I feel like ah, you got Look, we, we BFF, so she, <laughs> she comes to my little troll town behind me. It's the safest place you can be. Look, everybody, all the trolls are wearing masks up over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, my question is, you've been playing this character for a long time now, right? You're like the first movie you've been doing some little animated series after the Trolls animated series and and now in this so I want to know do you get any input you know when it comes to the lines or do you, what about some you know little improv moments or anything that <laughs> make it fit into the film or any you know? yeah absolutely um I get to do a lot. I mean, I first of all I want to go back and say thank you for noticing that I do all of that because Look, it I'm a professional, Ron. I got to do my research. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that because yeah, when I got the when I got the the first movie, I really loved the character, and I said to myself, I was like, I'm never gonna let anyone else take this character. So I do the movie, I do the Netflix show, I did the the live tour thing that they did. I did the voice for any Cooper voice is my voice because I really love the character, and um, yeah, they do. They give me a lot of chance to improvise and have a lot of fun. One of my favorite things. I mean, it was a silly small little line, but I watched the commercial just the other day and I poop out the whole cake and I just go happy birthday. And that that wasn't the line. That was just me talking about here's different things he would say if he pooped out a full cake. And so, you know, obviously it's not that hard to figure out. He, of course, he would say happy birthday. But the fact that they just let me play around and then they actually use it. It's a lot of fun. I love it. I love being Cooper. Well, thank you. Do you, well, so you, you talk, may you do birthday parties then? You do? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might get sued if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Ron. Hey, Tanya. <laughs> um, so other than pooping Who did cake, your hair for this? I like oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so other than pooping cakes and cupcakes, um, one of my favorite traits of Cooper's is just his open-mindedness. Um, what are your favorite traits about Cooper? Oh, thank you. Oh, I love that you said that because I, that is the thing that I also love about him. I love his sincerity. That's the thing I, I really like about this character is that although he's very playful and fun, he's n never usually joking. He's very sincere. He's very open hearted. And that's what brings the humor out is that he's just in his own world doing his own thing. And, and that's pretty much what I, I love about this character is that he's not like although he's a very funny very goofy character he's not like the punchline. nobody's like punching down at cooper he's just a very sweet lovable guy who, who's a little bit different and that's a lot like me <laughs> thank you hi ron lynette hey. from fantastic life oh how you doing i'm doing great thank you of course so based on your personality, which troll tribe or tribes would you choose to be a part of? 
I'm already in the perfect one, pop and funk. You get a little bit of both. I can listen to all my Parliament, my Frankie Beverly and Mays, all my old school stuff, and then pop on some Britney Spears, some Christina Aguilera. Have a good time. I'm I'm already in the perfect group. Those rock trolls, those they scare me a little bit. That's a little bit too heavy for what I'm into. But a little bit of pop, a little bit of funk, laid back with a groovy beat, you could dance to. I'm all about it. Me too. Thanks so much. <laughs> no problem, Lynette. Hi, Ron. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, my question is also about Cooper. Um, if you wouldn't mind um, delving a little bit more into uh, his role, um, he the the world of troll seems to really be about uh, love and acceptance. Um, well, at least Poppy's world. Um, but what is Cooper's point of view in all of this? He he still feels um, a little bit different. I mean, he's a he's a giraffe with, or he sort of has giraffe features with with dreads, and he's so adorable. Um, but sometimes he might feel like he doesn't quite fit in. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what I took away from the movie. Um, what uh, what do you think about his perspective and his, the journey of finding uh, his tribe? Well, I think Cooper feels like a lot of us at certain times in our lives are at certain age ages where we just don't quite feel like we fit in, even though they might be our friends or people that we love and been around for a while. Sometimes there's a little bit of like, oh, I, I'm, I don't know if I fit in here. I know I felt that way. Grow, I grew up in a very small town and, and I felt a little bit different sometimes. And, and I think that's what Cooper felt like. And it's just that he he knew that he was a little bit different. It's not like anyone ever made him feel like an outsider. It's just that he had his own journey to go on to discover himself and discover his family. And I think a lot of us go through that, whether it's us moving away or going to college or, or whatever it may be for us. It, it, it's a journey of self-discovery. And I think that's what Cooper was, was going on for this movie. Thank you. Of course. Hi, Ron. Hey, Megan. I'm so excited because I just watched your interview with Kelly Clarkson, and I was so excited to see that you create vision boards like Poppy creates scrapbooks. I do. <laughs> uh, I'm dying to know if a child were to make a vision board, what advice would you give them for creating one? Ooh, that's pretty good because that's definitely different than what I would say for an adult. Because um, an adult, you want to be very precise about what you want to do and what your goals are and, and, and focus on that. But I think for a child, you have to really be open with not knowing, you know, and, and unless you truly do. Some children know very young what they want to be. And in that case, I think you have to encourage them to just go full forward at that. But when you don't know, and you, I think it, the best thing in a vision board is like, hey, I want to try different things. I want to put myself out there. I want to be confident. I want to know that I am enough as I am. You know, let's focus on like accomplishing things because you're so young. You don't even know what you want to be yet. More focus of knowing that you're okay as you are, especially now with, so, you know, I hate to get all soapboxy, but you know, with so much different social media things that people kind of get this group think and they're always looking over their shoulder of what their friends think is okay. And I, I think knowing that it's okay to be yourself and okay to be weird and okay to find new things is the best thing for, for that's what I try to impart in my son every day. Well, all, all to the, to the soapbox. I love it all. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. So um, I think just in the in the times that we're in, um, I don't know that this was thought about going into the film, but one thing that I know my family um, really recognized throughout the movie is representation, um, just not only in different music and different cultures, but also I think they recognized different types of voices, um, particularly my my. Um, my boys are black and my husband's black. And so I know they recognize those times when they hear themselves represented in movies or see themselves represented in movies. Um, was that something that you felt like was um, really recognized going into the film that um, um, was important to the cast or do you feel, and do you feel like that was celebrated in the film? 
Yeah, absolutely, Kim. Uh, first, I'll, um, I knew from the get go that was one of the things they talked about when when the, they were even just show me in the script was that it was going to be a lot about representation and showcasing different genres of music and thereby showcasing different backgrounds and, and different cultures. And I was really into that. And I think a part that really showcases that in the movie is um, Anderson's Pox song in the movie, which kind of goes over the background of, of the troll history through his point of view, through a different point of view. And it kind of showcases how we do in history in our own lives where people can have different views of how things worked out. And I, I, as a big fan, you know, as a black man myself, as a big fan of hip hop, I love them showcasing like, Hey, a lot of these things that you love took from our culture, took from what mm -hmm. we're about and never gave back. And for them to put that in a big budget movie to oh. showcase the kids and showcase to everyone, I think was a great message that diversity matters people's voices matter people's history matter and it's not just about taking their culture and taking what you like about something it's also then protecting those people's lives and protecting that community and letting that community thrive absolutely I know there were so many times where my husband we were watching as a family but my husband and I like looked at each other during the movie and we were like oh because we know it went over the boys heads but I think even for us it had some good messages for sure yeah absolutely I think that's the that's my favorite thing about any great animated film is that when there's lessons that you can watch as a kid and get right away and then you can come back to that movie 10, 15 years later and you get the whole completely different messages. Um, and that's one thing I love about this movie and I love about most, I love kids movies, so. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Hello again. I guess I was about to start talking about Paddington too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this question my seven-year-old begged me to ask you, my seven-year-old daughter. She wanted to know if you had any input in Cooper's color of his hat. And if you didn't, what color would you have made it? Unfortunately, I had no no influence of any character design other than I think they took my smile and I like that. Uh, but other than that, no, I love his green hat. I have a little Cooper right here. He hangs out with me on my desk. Um, so I love his green hat, but my favorite color is purple. So if I were go if I was going to change it, he'd be wearing a purple hat on occasion as well. Uh, but I but he wore a purple hoodie, and I was like, that hoodie's dope. I want that hoodie in real life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no Hi, I'm back again. So I want to know <laughs> about your podcast. Getting okay. Better. So because um, I have a podcast, it's obviously not as big as yours because yours is amazing. Mine is Disney to divorce. So um, you know, when you get married, it's all happy, happy, and then bam, it's divorce. So I want to know about your podcast and what is the message you're getting out there, and do you see it in? your podcast somehow being incorporated in Trolls 3, if there is going to be a Trolls 3? Well, first of all, I hope there's a Trolls 3. Of the, there should be. Are they foolish? Um, <laughs> but my podcast is, is called Getting Better with Ron Funches. It, it's pretty much right there in the title. It's about us all being works in progress as human beings and, and trying to get better at life in, in all different ways. Health, um, spirituality, finances, all different ways. And it's just been part of my life. You know, I, I, my life's changed in a lot of different ways. I used to not have very much money. I used to be about 360 pounds. I used to just not eat well. And, and I just learned this process of getting better and, and not like hating on myself and not turning everything around like I got to be some big bodybuilder but it's just like I'm me I'm gonna just keep working at getting better my whole life and I want to talk to other friends and, and people in the industry about how they've gotten better and how they continue to focus on their goals and, and I love my podcast so I appreciate you asking about it we get some great people I want to get some people I would love to get Justin Timberlake I would love it. <laughs> I love it I'd love for you to be on my podcast whenever you get a chance Okay, we can probably set that up. I'm pretty free. Oh, I'm not as famous awesome. as the other ones. Uh, so. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Hi, again. Hi, Bert. Um, so kind of piggybacking off of what Kathy was talking about and what you shared with um, just your history with body image and weight and stuff. 
what would be like your number one tip for somebody who is trying to change their life, but it feels completely like Mount Everest and walking mm -hmm. up Mount Everest? What would your encouragement be? Break it down. Just break it down. Don't look at the end goal. That's again why I call it getting better and not being the best. You know, it's a taking little steps. And that's a lot of what I did health wise. I started cutting out what I could and looking at different things. I was a big, a big in the candy, big in the soda. And I was like, I should probably cut one of these. So I picked one and then I just stick with that. And then, you know, more and more as I continue to work out, walk a lot. I would say, especially right now, I think looking at it as a mental health thing, not just about looking good and not about um, getting six packs abs, but as we're all kind of being less active and we're all stuck at home more, the more that you can get that energy out and work out and, and, and get a good sweat on, you know, sometimes I get, I got my fiance, I got my son here, I, you know, we get a little angry and then I go treadmill and lift some weights and pump it out and I come back and we're all happy <laughs> it's so true I do the same thing <laughs> you got to <laughs> hey hi Sarah all right first of all I want to say you're such a joy to listen to I have just enjoyed this round table so much your answers have been so full of joy and passion and just realistic so thank you so much for that oh thank you uh so my question is about Cooper though without giving us any spoilers where do you think Cooper goes from here what do you want to see is his next step Oh, I want to see Cooper continue. I think what we what we have now is we, we have all these big troll villages now that we didn't know about before. And I think we, we what we like the movie is all about diversity and coming together. And I think what would be what fun to see is what happens after, you know, mm -hmm. coexisting together. Um, Cooper and his his parents and his his new brother. What what type of relationship do they have that they haven't seen each other in so long? They don't really know him that well, you know? So I could see them button heads in different ways. Um, so I think there's a lot of ways you could go with Cooper. I also just want to see a lot more Tiny Diamond because he's glittery and he's Keenan Thompson. But, <laughs> <Agreed>. <laughs> but for me, I, yeah, I just want, I just want to see more of his background, more of his family and how that kind of maybe can conflict with his old friends and family. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Hi again. Hi. So, okay. I'm changing my question because I had to <laughs> I'm ask you, but I'm going to ask you this one. So this movie couldn't have come out at like a better time with like what we're dealing with, with everything going on. And you're so full of energy and like your vibe is awesome. In a nutshell, because um, you have a son and you, like you have your family, what is your kind of Coles Notes version of like your advice? Like we're all, you know, bloggers, moms, we're all doing something. What's your advice for anyone that's having a difficult time right now? Uh, my advice would be to be okay with that. To be comfortable in uncomfortable situations is one of the best lessons that we can learn in life and to not fully feel that we need everything to be okay all the time. It's, it's going to be rough sometimes, but I think I've learned so much. I've spent so much more time with my son and my fiance, and I've, I've even, I've changed a bit. I'm less productive, but I like it. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, maybe I was overly productive. Maybe I was just working and I wasn't productive. <laughs> so I think just um, knowing that it, that things are going to be uncertain and, 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 but looking at what we have, right? Like most of us here have kids or most of us here have family that we really love or we wouldn't really be talking about this movie. Uh, but <laughs> it's, it's, I think looking at that and looking how like at the end of the day, when everything kind of breaks down, we kind of turn towards our family and our and the people that we love the most and they're there for us and that we need to recognize that even when it's not like this. Thank you, you're gonna make me cry, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so I kind of want to piggyback on, you know, we've already talked about Trolls 3, which is going to happen. <laughs> so you, since you've been Cooper for so long, when you first were, you know, in talks to be in the original movie, did you have any idea that this was going to be something that was going to be such a big part of your life doing the TV series and doing a sequel? And how far are you willing to take Cooper? I'm, I'm willing to take him as long as he wants to go. <laughs> really? I don't have any problem. I got, it doesn't really take that long because <laughs> I've been, the, the more I do it, the better I get at it. Um, but I, I definitely didn't see it as, as being as big of a deal when I got it to tell you the truth. I was, um, I wasn't apprehensive, but I was, you know, I, I come from stand up comedy and a lot of my friends and stuff were like tough, you know, gruffy guys. And I didn't think that being in some kids movie, they'd be like, oh, that's weird. You're supposed to be a comic comic, you know? But then I also looked at the people who I grew up loving people uh, like, you know, I can't remember his name right now. Mrs. Dogfire. <laughs> Robin Williams. Yes, Robin Williams in Aladdin. Oh, I mean, that's like one of my favorite things ever is, is him as the genie in Aladdin. So um, I kind of changed my opinion very quickly. And, and then um, there's a big difference between like people coming up to me and be like, oh, I like your jokes and I think you're funny. Then people being like, oh, my kid loves you. My kid carries a doll of you around, you know, like that to me is amazing. So I, I never want to give that up. I love it. Awesome. Thanks. Hey again, Ron. Hey. <laughs> um, so I think it was Kim that touched on it a little bit about the diversity and, and the movie and everything like that. But also, you know, these days with the animated films, we're seeing a lot of um, people being called out for, you know, voicing characters that are a different mm -hmm. race. And, and, and they even had the guy step down from uh, that voice Cleveland from Family Guy uh, uh, in the Cleveland show. So I just wanted to know, you know, how you feel about that and if you wanted to say anything on that. Um, I mean, I love any chance for, for more people to be represented by their af actual race. Like I, to me, there's different things. Like obviously a troll's a troll or anybody, you know, there's no race that a troll needs to be particularly, but I feel like if your character is coming from a black perspective, then perhaps you should have the voice by a black person. And I just think anything that gives people who, who, in general get less opportunities in this business and entertainment and gives them more opportunities I, i'm all for so i i don't have any problem with that i personally wasn't going walking around angry that cleveland was white i didn't care about that in my life um but i love that the opportunity again just more more voices more diversity more more change better art that's all i feel So you talked um, a lot about how um, Cooper is very confident and I, um, I like that he is different and like how you said, you know, you can send the message to kids that it's okay to be weird and it's okay to be different. So what's your best advice to kids on how, how to teach them that confidence? Because I, I have five girls and so I still haven't mastered that yet. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on how to teach that confidence to kids. Um, my advice, whether it's good or not, is to drill it into them. <laughs> it's to never miss a chance to drill it into them. That's one of the reasons in my, my podcast, we do affirmations at the top of every um, episode. To, I start every episode by saying, hey, I hope you're feeling strong. I hope you're feeling brave. I hope you're feeling loved. And that came from a thing I tell my son every day. Every day when I was getting ready to pin on the bed, I go, hey, you're strong. You're smart. You're kind. You're a good person. You know, and you might, you know, because there's times where we get into disagreements. He might have done something that I disagree with. And I want to make sure he always knows it's the action that we have a problem with. It was the behavior we have a problem with. You're a great person. And we're going to continue to make sure you become a better person, an empathetic person, a nice person to women. And so it, to me, it's just about drilling it into them and not because when they get out the door, door, the world is drilling it into them that they're not, you know. So I make sure that when my son is home with me, he knows he's a good person. He's a great person and that we're building towards becoming better. So uh, that's that's I hope that helps. <laughs> 
So I'd like to know, or oh, hi again, I feel rude. Hey. Oh, hello. no worries, Linda. <laughs> uh, so what were your thoughts initially and then seeing it sort of come to life in animation when you saw that your character had such an important storyline in this film? Um, I initially, I was just excited and I was a little bit nervous because I wanted to be able to pull it off. A lot of my um, both voice acting and regular acting had been about, hey, hit this punchline, hit this, you know, and sell this joke. And in this script, there was like, oh, he's going on a journey. There is a little bit of, of self-doubt in him, is a fear in him of going into a new place. And I wanted to be able to portray that. And so I was a little bit worried about that. But when I saw it, I was like, I nailed it. I did a great job. I'm, a good, I'm getting so much better at acting. People should put me in a lot of movies and, and with my face and on voiceovers. Um, so I was really, I was just really happy with, it, especially like when he's talking to himself in the water and, and, and kind of getting ready to give up. I was like, that's some pretty solid, simple acting. So I'm not, I'm pretty critical of myself. So I was very happy with that. Well, I agree, you nailed it. So thank you for that. Thank you. Hi again, Ron. This hey, is so Lauren. much fun. Thank I'm you having a good time too. A, <laughs> for uh, uh, help leading us with a, such a lively conversation. I'm really enjoying this and, and uh, conversing with my fellow bloggers as well. It's a lot of fun. Um, so my question is about the release of Trolls um, World Tour. Um, do you think it will change the way movies are released? Um, so different than what, what uh, Hollywood's been used to for a long time. Yeah, I think, you know, it, it definitely was a big success. And I hopefully that I think it leads to some changes, but I, I really don't know. I you know I just kind of work and, and, and hope that they continue to make movies. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, you know, it was definitely a good case that things can be done at home. But as well, I also love a theater experience. So we'll see. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So you have, um, you have a great comedic career and you have a son. And Cooper has a great line about dad jokes in the movie. So I'd like to know, do you have a favorite dad joke? <laughs> Um, no, most of my jokes are kind of raunchy. So I, <laughs> I live a weird life where I do very childish things and also do some things for just adults. Um, but my son is just super funny. He's been real hilarious lately. We were watching some some action movie recently where some criminals were trying to get away from something and they just show this line. It was like, well, I know who could figure it out. And then my son just turns to me and he goes, Jack Bauer. And I was like, that's such a weird dad joke that you like that my 17 year old son is real into 24 right now. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, sorry, sure. just a jump in here. I think we're actually going to take a quick break. Because um, everyone went through twice, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so we're going to take a quick break. Um, if everyone could be back here at three, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Ron. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.